JX, 1800. 6 o'clock p.m. Citizens of Earth, lend me your ears and listen to me very carefully. My name is Dr. Eggman, the world's greatest scientist and soon to be the world's greatest ruler. Now witness the beginning of the greatest empire of all time. <laughs> The moon is gone? Eggman! Oh, that creep never gives up. But how did he manage to harness all that energy? It's got to be the Chaos Emeralds. Yeah, that's the reason they were looking for him. Tails? The Chaos Emeralds are like Agni. They have the power to attract each other. I can use that to find where Eggman is. Alright, Stage 7, Mission Street, Elude Enemy Pursuit. Hello everybody, SuperMe84 here, and welcome back to Sonic Adventure 2 Battle for the Nintendo GameCube. In the last episode, we fought against Shadow and did Green Forest with Sonic and Pumpkin Hill with Knuckles. So, Dr. Eggman blew up half of the moon, but don't worry, the moon will be back being full again, because in future Sonic games, the moon goes back to normal like Eggman never blew up the moon at all. Um... In Season 2 of Sonic X, which had an adaptation to Sonic Adventure 2, Eggman blew up half of the moon and he turned half of it into, like, a robotic dome. It was kind of weird, but anyway. So this is where we get Tails' first power-up, the booster. This allows you to hover when you hold down A button during a jump. So, for example, if a platform is too far to go through, I can hover. Okay. Alright, we gotta go up this here. So, Mission Street. I like Mission Street. Well, the problem is that you have to think fast when the airstrikes fly by because they can fire at you with no react timing. The ground can shake constantly throughout the stage like it's having an earthquake. And some of the platforms will collapse, so you need to be careful not to fall. So apparently the police put an 8 year old fox on a wanted list for 1 million, I think. I don't know why. Even though you can't throw an 8 year old in jail, you would just send him home. You know, I don't understand why we have to run our way out of enemy pursuit instead of flying because when I watched um, some call me Johnny's review on Sonic Adventure 2, he did make a good point, like, the cyclone can turn into a plane. Why are we blowing up stuff and causing havoc 
on the streets or on a broken highway. We have no business being here. But, whatever. I'm pretty sure Gunn are using taxpayer money to stop a fox that's running on a mech. Which I wouldn't be surprised since the government uses taxpayer money on military weapons anyway. So, it's been two years since the last episode, and I'm sorry because other things got in the way, and I was dealing with time constraints, and you know, sometimes it's not easy editing when you're also doing a commentary video, because you have to balance the game audio and the voice audio, you know, to make sure it's not too loud or too quiet. Luckily, I'm on summer break, and I wanted to get this Let's Play off the ground. Including Sonic Adventure, which I probably might do it in the fall or when I'm on winter break. Um, when you're going on that uphill slope, there's gonna be a jet that's hovering on the right side with its loud noise shooting at you. Um, you can either shoot it or just ignore it. But if the jet noises start to bother you, you should just take it out. And yeah, see, like that, that can be kind of annoying at times. But don't worry though, but we're almost out. We're almost out. So I just gotta get away from these robots. We're almost there. Almost there. Um, yeah, there are two platforms above that can fall on you if you don't run in time. Yeah, like that. Alright, come on. We're almost there. We're almost there. Alright, let's make a run for it. Or, or okay, okay, I guess not. Yeah, we can't. Whatever, we're done. We're done. Alright, 4 minutes and 9 seconds, with a total of 31 rings. A! Yeah, we get an A rank. And we get our 7th emblem. Alright, Stage 8, Aquatic Mine. didn't expect the inside of the mines to be like this. So this is going to be tougher than I thought. So this stage has these switches that can change the water levels, whether if you want the water to rise or descend. And before we collect the emeralds, we want to get Knuckles' second power up, which is kind of hidden. But first we have to put the water level to three, which drains all the water out in the entire stage. There it is. Take you out. Oh, get off. Alright, let's go down. Yeah, it's down here. One thing about the treasure hunting characters is that they have the ability to swim and go down underwater. But you can't be down for too long. Otherwise, you're going to hear the drowning timer music. And if you don't get out in time, You'll drown. Like that. And we got our first emerald. With the radar without even detecting it. Alright. Knuckles' is second power up. The air necklace. An oxygen tank necklace. You can now breathe underwater. So now we can swim underwater. And not have to worry about drowning. Yay! Um... Another thing about Aquatic Mine is that some of the emeralds can be hidden in awkward places where the radar can get a signal, but it's not the exact place where it is. It can either be up, down, or even more down, or on the other side of the stage, or even a guard robot can have, have one. Alright, gotta find that second emerald. Never 
know it's gotta be here somewhere. Ha! Yeah, like I said, uh, the guard robots can sometimes have emeralds inside them. All right, now we gotta find that, find the last one. It has to be down here somewhere. Just gotta keep looking. I should probably find it in no time. I hope. Come on. It's gotta be here somewhere. Well, after six minutes of trying to find the last emerald, it turns out the emerald was hidden all the way down here. So stupid! Yeah, six minutes and 25 seconds and a total of 72 rings. E. I have to try harder. Yeah, that sucked. Alright, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like or a comment. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.